everybody and welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa, I am The Crafty Author and welcome to my quilting room. Today, we are going to make a very, very fun block. We're actually going to make a wall hanging. And what we will be making is called a disappearing shoe fly. Um, I made a shoe fly block when we did the um, block of the month last year. And so if you need to learn how to do a shoe fly, I'm gonna show you anyway, but if you want more in depth instruction, you can check that video out and I will post that at the end of this video. So make sure you stay tuned because you'll be able to catch it there. This is what a disappearing shoe fly block looks like. We are going to be making a wall hanging out of this. So I'm gonna make three more blocks I am using some really cool Tula Pink fabric that I have that I purchased on my trip to Arizona a while back. And so I just decided to incorporate this because it looks so cool. So we are going to go ahead and get started. I will put the cutting instructions down below in the description box. I will also put them in the comment section and pin it to the top. All right, so here is my panda fabric that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go ahead and fold this up just cause it'll make it easier for me to cut this. Now, again, I'm using an AccuQuilt Go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and measure six inches because that's really all I need for um, this to fit on my cutting board. So I'm gonna be cutting a five inch square. Now I could just cut them at five inches here but I find it easier to cut and more accurate to use my AccuQuilt than to use just my rotary cutter. So here I am with my five inch board here, or my five inch die. Now I'm just gonna place my fabric that I just cut at six inches. I'm gonna cut it right here. I'm gonna lay this part down. I'm gonna lay right down at the edge of the selvage here. So this is all that it's gonna cut off is this selvage end. And then I'm going to fan fold this. So right here now I have four pieces if I were to cut it there. I'm gonna fan fold it again and now I'm going to get six pieces here. So it's gonna cut six pieces total just by doing that. This is my go big over here and all I do is just set it down and put my die right through the machine. Now that that's done cutting, I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a nice little rub to get all the static out. I have a piece here that I could use, but I'm gonna use this as a, um, a piece of scrap that I'll cut for use for a future project. This is the small amount of waste that we have. You can see that. We could keep that for crumb quilting, but I don't do that because that's way too small and frustrating for me. And we have our squares all cut perfectly. So there's six of them here. Next thing I do is I take a ruler and a friction pen or any kind of pen that you have. I'm gonna use this blue friction pen. I'm gonna take my lighter square and I am just going to draw a line diagonally from corner to corner. So you should have something that looks like this, okay? So I'm gonna do that to both of my pieces. So I need two of these, of my lighter pieces for this, and I need two of my darker pieces for this. Now what I'm gonna do is take my dark, one of my dark pieces, and I'm gonna put these right sides facing each other. And I'm gonna take a pen and I'm just going to mark that in the center just to hold those pieces together. And if you wanted to, you could actually do it like this. This would probably make more sense to hold it together like this because what you're gonna do 
is you're going to go to the sewing machine, use your sewing machine foot and sew a quarter of an inch down along this line on each side. You will do this to make each one of your blocks. So you're going to do it for all four blocks. This is how you will get your half square triangles. All right, so I have finished stitching on both sides of my, um, of that line that I drew a quarter inch on each side. Not sure you could see it real well here, but you definitely can on that side. So I'm just gonna take these pins out because we don't need them anymore. And now what we do is we're going to take a ruler. We are going to place it along that line that we drew. And we are going to cut that. We're also going to do it to our other piece. Now we have half square triangle. We want to push this to the dark side. So I'm just going to open this up and finger press just so you can see what this looks like. So now we have something that looks like this. So now we're ready to square up our half square triangles. We're gonna square these up to four and a half inches. I am using a four and a half inch squared ruler. If you do not have a squared ruler, I highly suggest getting one. Um, it will just make your life that much easier. So this is how I square mine up. So I'm just gonna place it on here with the diagonal line on my seam line. I'll show you this again. And then I just cut. Just like that. So let's do this one again. This one is not squared up. We're gonna take it and we are going to line up this center line right here on our seam right there and then we just give it a cut and then I'm just going to turn my mat if you don't have a mat that turns it's okay you can still do this on your mat but it is easier if you have one that that does turn it makes it easier for squaring a lot of things up and that's how you square up your your four and a half inch square. Once we have all the blocks cut, we're gonna lay it out for this, the shoe fly now. So the shoe fly, we're gonna take our darkest piece and put it in the center. And then we're gonna take these pieces, our half square triangles. We are going to put those up at the top like this. And then so this is just how you want to lay this out. Um, I can never remember how to do this. I always have to work it laying this out. Okay, so you want your, your designs, your lighter ones, facing outward and outward towards the down area. And then we're going to take our other fabric, our other light fabric, and we're gonna use that to fill it in. So you'll need four of those. And now you should be able to see the shoe fly pattern popping out here. And you could just leave it like this if you wanted to because this pattern is really cool looking, I think, all on its own. But we are going to do Next is we're going to sew all of these pieces together. So we're going to sew these two outer pieces to this piece, these two outer pieces to our center piece, and these two outer pieces to this middle piece. And then what we'll do is we will sew all of these rows together. So now we have our block all pieced together. So it should look somewhat like this. I will be working with my larger ruler. So now I know that this is a four inch square in the center. 
and I am going to measure two inches with my ruler right here. One, two. I'm gonna put the two inch line right here on this side of my seam, right where my, my center square, right here. So I should have one, two. And then I'm going to cut right down the center. I'm going to do the same thing going across. I am going to find right here on the bottom seam here of my little square that's in the center, right there. I'm going to measure two inches. So I'm just going to put that two inch line right there on that seam line. And again, I'm going to just cut it in half. All right. So now we're finished with that. All we need to do now is spin our bottom one and spin our top left one square. And now you have the disappearing block. This is what it looks like when you've spun it. So you're just spinning this top one and you're spinning this bottom one here. And that's how you get this design in your block. Then all you do is go to the sewing machine and sew this piece to this piece, right sides facing each other with a quarter inch seam. You're gonna do the same thing with these two blocks, sew them together and then you'll sew both of these rows together with a quarter inch seam. I now have all of the blocks completed. So now I'm gonna lay them out in the way that I want them to be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and do that right here. Now I could lay them out several ways. I could lay them out with our arrows going this way or I could have them going this way and this way, or I could have them going the same direction if I wanted to, and that would mean that they would all be going down like this. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and just turn mine this way. Actually, I should do it this way so you can see the pattern here. So, this is what I will do here. Just do it this way. And then I am going to do the same thing here. And make sure that I've got this going correctly. So this is how I've laid it out. And as you can see with the way that I have this going, you can see that there's a shoe fly right in the center, and then it makes this really large star around it. And it looks really cool. So I'm gonna sew these pieces together, and these are just four blocks. So you would just sew them together like you normally would. So I'm just gonna put those two together. These two will go together. I will sew a quarter inch down, and then I will attach them as as row to each other. So I've gone ahead and added this light border just around the, um, the wall hanging itself. And this is cut at one and a half inches. So this is a one and a half inch strip. And that is all I've done is gone ahead and gone around the whole entire quilt with this. I'm going to cut um, another um, binding or not binding, I'm sorry, um, border. And that one is going to be cut at two and a half inches. So when I sew it on here, it'll be a two inch border. And so I'm going to do that with a darker color. I'm actually going to do it with this fabric. Um, I like the way it makes the colors pop out in this. So this is what I'll be using for my two and a half inch border that I'm gonna cut. And I will put that on all four sides as well and that will be the end of it for the borders for me. And then what I'll do is I'll sandwich the quilt 
or the wall hanging and I will quilt it and then I will bind it. So this is the end of the quilting and I am quilting this wall hanging on my, um, my brother 8500D, which is a dream machine. It's an embroidery machine. And this is an actual design from Designs by Juju. And I will link to this design below in the description box, but I wanted you to see as I'm finishing up this wall hanging, how I have used my um, embroidery machine to quilt this. It's finished. So this is what the wall hanging looks like. So this is the disappearing shoe fly. So if you decide that you want to make one, then you can. I quilted this on my embroidery machine with the designs by Juju, which I showed you. So I'll link to that. And it just turned out pretty amazing. So everything that you'll need to find will be down below in the description box. Also, Wait till the end of this video. You will be linked to all of the videos, including the original shoe fly um, block pattern that goes into more detail on how to make it. And uh, if you'd like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe. I upload awesome new videos every Tuesday and Friday. And keep on crafting. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.